Welcome back to mini lecture number five uh, for Computer Science 163 at the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire. Today we'll be talking about passing arrays to functions. Now before you start this lecture, um, I hope that you should, or I expect that you should be able to answer some of these questions. First, what does it mean to pass by reference? Second, what are reference parameters in a function? Three, what is an array in C++ and how do I use them? Basically, all of the stuff from mini lecture number four. So I encourage you to pause here and reflect on these, make sure that you understand them pretty well. And then if you don't, uh, see if you can go back to the previous lectures or some other material, and then when you feel comfortable, uh, go on. So passing arrays to functions. Here's a quick, uh, fast and dirty example. Here's how we can do it. So we have, let's first skip down to the main method below. We declare an array of five integers and initialize them. Then we call a function called print array, where we pass the array vals and the size of the array five. So let's go up now to the uh, print array function. It returns void, so there's no return type. It has as a parameter vals, the int array. Notice the syntax for that. You've got square brackets here, but the bra square brackets don't have a size. That means that the array vals comes into this function without knowing the size of that array. Then, so what we do then is we also pass in the size of the array as an unsigned. Why do we pass it in as an unsigned? Well, a lot of times you'll see it passed in as an int, but I like to pass them in as with type unsigned because um, arrays always start index counting from zero and then count up. So you can never have a negative array element. And so uh, just making sure that the variable is not unsigned uh, makes that work just naturally. So then the print array function. What it does is um, you just have an unsigned i. This is the counting variable for your for loop. You could also put uh, int i or uh, unsigned i. You could also have it inside of the for loop. So like int i equals zero. So it starts counting from zero. i will be the index element or the index uh, for the array. Um, i will go up to but not including array size, and then I will go up. So then in the for loop, it just has a single line, so we don't need the curly braces around the, the for loop body. So we just have C out less and less than vowels, less and less than I, less and less than square bracket equals, and then less and less than vowels I, less and less than end line. So it's gonna print vowels I, where the I is the index, and then the value of that array element um, on a new line for every line for every element in this array and then it returns let's see what this looks like here's the output so for the first element remember the first element has index zero that's equal to one vowels one is equal to two vowels two is equal to three and so on and so on and so on so here are some tips the first is that arrays automatically pass by reference into functions Again, what that means is that when I pass an array into a function, the computer is, say, from the main function to my print array function, the computer will take the location of the array in the main function, in memory, that is, and it will share that location to the function that I call. So it's not going to copy all of the, var the values in that array to this new function's memory. It's going to just pass the location, um, which is going to be fast. That also means that if I um, modify one of the values in the function, it's going to modify the value when that function is done. So I can init I can call a function, pass it an array, fill up all of the, the values of that array, or fill up all the elements of the array with values, and then when I come back to my main function, it will still have those values that got changed in that function. The other tip is when you pass an array to a function, you also really, really should pass the length of the array. When I pass the array to the function, remember, you can't pass the size of the array with it as part of, you can't say, I'm passing an array of size six. You have to pass the array, then you pass the size six. Um, the array doesn't know how long it is uh, just by default. You have to uh, keep track of it yourself. Here's an example function. This example function will, when you call it, will take an array and the size of the array, and it will fill all of the values of that array to be zero. So what will happen uh, in this function is, first of all, again, notice the syntax of passing an array. We say int values with the square brackets, 
That reminds us and tells the function to expect an array, not just a single int called values, but an array of integers uh, called values. And then we pass the array size because we need to keep track of that. Then in the body of this, we declare a variable called index. Index is going to be, well, the index. Again, this is an example of self-documenting code where we're describing the code and making it more readable by naming variables things that make sense. So in the for loop, I count from index equals zero to uh, index is uh, up to, but not including, array size. So if array size is 20, it'll go from zero to 19. And when index goes to 20, it will exit the loop. So it'll only go from zero to 19. So first it will set uh, values index to zero equal to zero. Then it'll do values where index equals one to zero, then values two is zero, values three is zero, dot, 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 all the way to values 19 is zero. Um, and then it'll stop and then the function will return. Cool. Example number two. This function calculates the sum of values in a given array. So again, we're past, now we're using doubles and now we're including a return value. So whereas the last example was void, now we're, we're returning a double, which is the sum. So here we're passing in an array called values and, uh, and then the size of the array. And again, we're looping over all of the indices in that for loop. We're having a running total, a variable called total, where it starts to be zero, or it starts at zero. And then every iteration to that for loop, we're adding the value of the next index in that array. So by the time we've looped over all of the values, then total should contain the total of all of the values in the array. And you can code this up and check it yourself. Maybe you could put some output statements in there. Here are some end of lesson review questions. Hopefully you've learned something. Uh, this will help you check. How can I pass an array of doubles to a function? What would the syntax be for that? Why do I need to pass the length of an array to a function? Now C++ doesn't require you to pass the length of the array, but if you don't have the length of the array, you'll either have to assume that you know the length of the array in the function, or you just won't be able to maybe use all the elements in the function. Or you'll have to pass it to another function that doesn't care about the length of the array. Three, if a function changes values in an, in an array that was passed to a function, will the values still be changed when the function returns? So for example, if I have my main method where I declare an array, and then I call some other uh, method called uh, mess with arrays, or mess with array values. Then in that mess with array values function, I change all the values of the array. Will those values be changed when I come back to the main method? Or will it still have the original array? In mini lecture number four, I challenge you guys at the end to um, write some code that would first declare an array, then would initialize all of the values of that array to be equal to the array index divided by 100. And then I said, um, print that out, um, each element of the array. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take that and to create two functions to do those two operations. So the first function will initialize all the values of the array that you declared in main. And then the second function will print out those variables um, of an array. Now you could do this uh, a number of different ways, but bonus points if you can get both of those functions to work with an array of any size. So then, however you do it, test your code. Now if you really wanna test it, and you've done it so that you've generalized your two functions so that they can take arrays of any size, try doing it with um, an array of 20 doubles, try it with an array of 10 doubles, try it with an array of 100 doubles, and try all of that in the same main method. So I have to first declare an array of 10 doubles, then call the initialize routine on that, and then call the printing uh, function on that, then declare another array with 20 doubles, and do the same uh, call the two functions. Then declare an array of 100 doubles, call the two functions. And if they all work, you're golden. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and thank you for your time and attention. Take care, Jess out.